Uh, good evening. It is the 7th of September, uh, 7 o'clock in the evening on a Friday. Here comes the welfare rights broadcast uh, that we try to do every Friday, and the program is called Ask Welfare Rights. Uh, we weren't with you last week. Uh, Marion and I both decided that we better stay in the house and close our eyes rather than <laughs> have our eyes closed outside the house. It's so many things that were going on last week, but we want to say hello and uh, uh, welcome to the Ask Welfare Rights broadcast. And I'm here with my colleague, the national chairperson of the National Welfare Rights Union, Marion Kramer, who's going to give you an official welcome. So, Marion, please say hello. Hello, and I'm so happy to be back here. It seems like we've been on a, uh, it would have been nice if we had been on a vacation, but we would have been working like, mm. you could get up early in the morning. You know, one thing, I keep saying I'm retired, but I'm up so early, I'd be wondering, <laughs> what am I retired from, <laughs> you know? But um, we're happy to be back here with you. We have a lot of stuff to talk about, and I want you to rem remind you that you're listening to uh, the great WHP, Yes. Uh, yeah, HPS. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Good. Good. The Good. website is www.tv33whpr.com. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you know that um, we need you to call in. Uh, I see where the ex-president was on TV tonight. Yes. Yeah, and it, that generally don't happen after you have uh, been the president for a while, you know, you know, have left the office and stuff. But, you know, people are getting interested in this next um, campaign that's taking place. And we need to, you know, we need to understand that, again, we're in war, Maureen. Yes, we are. Uh, and people, look. A lot of those folks, be they Dems, Republican, and stuff like that, do not have our interests at heart. Now, the people that we're working with do. So I want you to call in, and we want to hear uh, what you have to say. And I want to remind folks, now, Maureen and I participated, our families, in the um, Labor Day march. It was much larger this year than last. I never did hear the numbers. I, I didn't get the numbers, neither. You and I was walking you too know, fast. To, to did not hear what the numbers ended but, uh, up being. You know, but it looked like it was a lot of people there. Yeah, and we always march with Local 600. They have our shirts ready when we get out there mm -hmm. and everything. And we want to always say thank you to Local 600 for being there for us, as well as the region. And want to say and thank you well to old Reggie. Re yes. Reggie that made certain we had shirts. That's and right. And Rory. Yes. Was riding up and down, down the street. <laughs> uh, is that the, was he What's the chairperson of uh, Region 1A? Rory? No, no, he's I, not I head of the Ford, up. The, Ford, the Ford Department. He took, uh, they put him in Jimmy's uh, place once he retired. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so. thank you very much, members of uh, Local 600 and all the regional attachments that go with you all, but uh, they always look after us yes. so very, very nicely. Uh, they they could have uh, cooled rights. that uh, weather off a little bit for us. Yeah. It was warm last Monday. Oh, my boy. God. We were Ooh, sweating. Navar uh, said we were melting. We were not sweating. <laughs> Navar said we were melting out there. Boy, it was hot. Remember, you can call mm -hmm. us at 313-868-4336. Uh, three one three eight six six zero three five one eight six eight zero three five one. Is it eight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and let me say something about the president, uh, the former president. Oh my. What must be a, a thorn in number forty five's heart? <laughs> but he got so many thorns. Oh yeah. Uh, 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 the former president Barack Hussein Obama today accepted an award. I forgot who gave it to him now. Yeah, an award, uh, was in Chicago, it must have been the uh, University of Illinois then, mm -hmm. that gave him an ethics in government award. <laughs> Something that number 45 will never get. He will never receive never it. Never get. No, but, well, he uh, might get it from some of the people that have been supporting him, but he But none of not these universities, go, well, now, let me take that back to you. you. What's that can, religious, or Oral Roberts University, yeah. he might get a well, it can't even be ethics with them. Because remember, he was grabbing people's parts. 
I so would she, have to name it something else. Along with what you're saying, <laughs> I was looking on online the other night, and I was supposed to be looking at something else, but what popped up was the tw were the 20 most uh, more uh, ministers that are the highest paid in the nation. Highest paid ministers? Yeah. Well, clearly none of them are in Detroit. <laughs> none, none, none of them. Girl, so that, what are they all in the South? One, one of the ones you just talked about was one. Oral no, Roberts. Oral Robertson and all the rest. Oral of Oral Roberts is dead. So must be one of his kids. One of his kids or something. But I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look at that again. And I meant to uh, bring that tonight. It was. Uh, yeah. It was very interesting. And what was his name that came from Texas for Aretha? Um, um, you ain't talking about that foolish pastor. Not well. No, I ain't talking about that. Jasper, the friendly ghost. Jasper would. No, slap that was it. Casper. What you talking about? <laughs> not Jasper. Okay. Now wait just a minute here. Let's see if you can see it. Put the twenty most. I am. And you will be shocked at how much money Ooh, these minutes. I bet you they all from the south too. Not all of them. You know, mm -mm. really? I don't think so. It's um. A lot of black folks. Okay, let's see here. Highest just paid. Asked. You could have just asked. Uh, I got more Google. sophisticated now. Highest paid clergy. E R G Y. Let's see. <laughs> Highest paid clergy. It's a. That's a whole list. Mm-hmm. The highest paid church denominations in America. My goodness, all right. Okay. Here we go. Scoot it up. I know how to do it. It's called Google. I didn't Google. learn how to do it now. Call Google. You know? All right, let's see what it says. None of them are in Detroit, and I'm sure about that. <laughs> all right, this is not coming up. Five highest paid Christian denominations. Oh, I didn't know this. Presbyterians are the highest paid Christian denominations. Next are Baptists. I wonder if the Presbyterians know this. <laughs> Baptists and then Lutherans and Catholics are fourth. And independent ministries are fifth. And those are the ones that build the churches on the corner with the uh, storefront. And and uh, 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 the um, the church uh, name is written in felt uh, magic markers. I, I've seen some of those. I've seen some of those. I know who, who those are. All right. I don't want to mess up in the Lord. Well, we'll bring it back yeah, on I, next I'll week. Look it up, you know. Um, but if you want to, you can go to the internet and put in there the highest paid, the twentieth, twenty. They said twenty. High, highest paid ministers in the United States. Wait just a minute, it popped up. Uh-huh. Who you have These first? These pastors, hold on, I, I, I would have guessed it was him. Who? Joel. Oh, yeah, but keep going. Okay, it's a commercial, never mind. I have to look it up later. <laughs> All right, let's talk about where we went the other day, Marion. Um, uh, the African, uh, Afro, uh, Af I would say Afro, the African American Museum hosted the fifth annual General Baker Jr. tribute. And yeah. we were there yesterday mm -hmm. on the 6th of September down at the museum. And what the cover program, it's a beautiful program. Mm -hmm. It says the 50th anniversary of the Dodge Revolutionary Union Movement, which was called DRUM. Uh, Thursday, September 7th from 6 to 8 at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. And we were in the GM Theater, all right? And hold on, Marion, here's a couple people waiting to talk to us. Uh, you're the first caller on Ask Welfare Rights. You're on the air. You talking to me? Yes, I am. Okay, I, I tried to call you last week to tell you, ain't no way you said you never heard Carolyn Franklin. That's her voice in the background. Um, ain't no way the high voice. Who, whose voice is that? Carolyn Franklin got the high voice. On oh, oh no you way. mean on, on uh, Ain't No Way? Carolyn Franklin. All right, she you know, Ain't No Way. Okay, I didn't know that's who that no, was. Ain't no that way. Ca Carolyn okay. 
Okay, thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, dear. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, caller, you've been waiting, and thank you for waiting and uh, calling Ask Welfare Rights. Well, good evening. How are you ladies doing? Fine. Fine. Good evening. That's wonderful. Um, I have some excellent news. Good. We need excellent news. <laughs> I'm glad. And with this, it's two major hospitals are hiring. I have applications. You don't have to go on the Internet. I need to figure out where <clears throat> and who do I need to come down to your office and for anyone that oh, wants Jesus these applications Lord. have to come down there and get them at your office. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're there from 11 to 4. 12.30 to 4. That's what, when they get there. And well, Joe's I talked there to Ms. Morrison this mm-hmm. Wednesday, yes, and uh, she was supposed to have given you all my message. Uh, you know, we've been running, so, and, and, and uh, we're behind on getting the messages. But here's what you do. Call us down at Welfare Rights on Monday. Leave a message if there's nobody there. And because uh, Augustus gets there before that. Sometimes. And uh, 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 let's see if we can make arrangements to uh, connect with you Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week. What do you think? Okay, and, and, and for everyone that's listening, these are jobs like cashiers, um, dietary, housekeeping, you know, you don't have to have no education for these jobs. Do you have so, greeters? Maureen greeters, and I might yes, want to yes, be greeters. Yes, 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 I forgot about that, yes. All right, greeters, all so, right. With that being said, I got 30 from each hospital. I lucked up. God was with me to give these jobs out to my community. All right, Okay. thank you. You are so welcome. So, again, I would definitely call you Monday, and uh, if I can, i probably call Tawana. Uh, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. And ask her in case you right. come by and get them and she, pick them up and bring she, them to you. She knows her name. It is. Yes. It's all right. <laughs> you can call her and ask if she can come by. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. you are so welcome. All right, now. All right, okay, bye-bye. All right, Mary and I found it. The number one preacher that's paid the most, I am surprised at that, is Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland, C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D. I see him on TV sometimes. Mm-hmm. I go right by. His net worth is $760 million. <laughs> I'm laughing because he didn't take that vow of poverty. <laughs> no, net worth is $760 million. Number two? Bishop T. D. Jakes, <laughs> net worth one hundred and fifty million. Look at that. Did you see uh, that? Uh, Copeland seven sixty. T. D. one fifty. He got a, a, a one fifth of what Kenneth Copeland has. Ooh Lord. Doing? Doing? All right. Uh, David. Uh, I don't know who that is. Oye Depo. I've heard him on TV. Mm-hmm. He's a Nigerian pastor. Mm-hmm. He's worth one hundred and fifty million. Pat Robinson, my favorite. That's a, yeah, my, that, my, my favorite. Your favorite? Yes, my favorite. Man, uh, he becomes your favorite. He becomes my favorite because he's the first person I heard get on TV and talked about the Pope. As soon as the Pope got elected, was the devil in disguise. Oh, no. And he this didn't. is what Pat was saying. First time I heard that this and is Pat Robinson. Uh, 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 do I claim who? Pat Robinson. No, he's, he's my favorite. Because he's the guy that talks the most junk, I almost said the wrong word, the most junk on TV that I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. Except for, what's the one's name? Well, maybe he's on here. I, I don't want to sing his song yet. Benny Hinn. I've seen him on TV. He's mm-hmm. worth, oh, he, he's almost poor. He's worth only $42 million, mm-hmm. You know. Joel, way down on the list. Mm-hmm. Joel is worth $40 million. Mm-hmm. That's the day. Let's see what's going to happen to Joel by Monday. My other favorite, Creflo, give me a dollar. Yes. Creflo, give me a dollar. He's worth $27 million. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh, things are not looking good in the Billy Graham family. He's down there. His he's net worth is only, he's dead he's now. now uh-huh, a son. a son. He's only worth $25 million. A Southern Baptist. He got a long sermon. Who is this? 
Rick Warren. Mm -hmm. Is oh, that's that fascist mm -hmm. who goes around acting like he's a preacher. I I remember him. All right, and he's from uh, California. And how much he's worth? He's worth. I'm sorry. Uh oh, wait a minute. He's worth very poor. He's only worth twenty five million. <laughs> oh, Boreen, please. He's very poor. And here's Joyce, Joyce? Uh, bringing up the rear. Yeah. Joyce Myers. You know, she's very poor, too. She's uh, matching, um, um, what's the guy's name? She's matching Rick Warren. Mm -hmm. She's worth $25 million. She's mm -hmm. the one that had the golden toilet seat. You remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where she writes her sermons. On the toilet. Oh, yeah. Juanita Bynum, never heard of that. Juanita Bynum mm -hmm. is only worth $10 million. She's very poor. She might get food stamps. Juanita oh, Bynum is an American actress, singer, author, and televangelist, my favorite. Her 1997 video and audio tape series called No More Sheets catapulted her to the spotlight in the Christian circles. The reprise of the program was one of the most popular portions of Woman Thou Art Loose conference in 1999 and was loose. attended by 52,000 mm -hmm. people. She also organized the annual Women's Weapons of Power Conference. Until 2006, she appears regularly on the Trinity Broadcasting Net uh, Network, that's that TBN, and has released a number of audio books and recordings of her sermons. Mm -hmm. Reverend John Hagee, oh, he's really dirt poor. He's only worth $5 million. Well, you have to, you have to get a um, GoFundMe account for him. And Paula White. She's worth $5 million. I've seen her on TV sometimes. Mm -hmm. I go right by. Yeah, uh, Bishop Noel Jones, I don't know who that is. He's worth $5 million. Where is he from? Ph.D., Longview, Texas, one mm -hmm. of those southern ministers. The Reverend Louis Farrakhan, now he's dirt poor, too. He's only worth $3 million. They got him at the bottom of the list. Oh, okay. Well... Uh, we might have to get a GoFundMe account for several of those that only got three million at the bottom of the list. You know, they try to get, get them a food more. stamp case. Caller, you on the air? You've been patient. Thank you for waiting and thank you for calling. Ask Welfare Rights. Well, good evening, fellow patriots. And hey, good evening, sir. Good How are you? I'm fine. I apologize for missing uh, General Baker's uh, affair yesterday. Uh, you know, I love attending those. Yeah, you usually affairs. there. Uh, we know you were there in spirit. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, oh, uh, all I can think of is uh, the, the Richard Pryor uh, variety special when he came out and with the OJ's playing money, 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 and then he said, uh, you send me one dollar and I will send you one touch from God. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I think we got a lot of these kind of uh, uh, one-touch preachers going on here. It's funny for folks well, to have this kind of money. And we got all these poor communities, all in the cities that they represent. Isn't that yeah. odd? Well, I, 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 Maureen, uh, Mo, uh, Maureen and, and, and Marion, uh, I need to ask y'all a question because I know y'all, you know, church go to church every Sunday. I'm not at, you know, church go every Sunday, you know. But uh, I wonder how much Jesus would be worth today in that list. Uh, Jesus would be at the bottom, bottom of, the list. of the list. Thank you very much. He Hallelujah. Would, yeah, we would probably have to get him some food stamps. And we'd have to open up a GoFundMe account, you know, and, and get him a bus card because he probably wouldn't be able to afford a car. That I list. Have a bus card. wouldn't accept money because you know? that's who he was. You see? Yeah. You know, when he told Maybe. Lazarus, his best friend, now you tell your best friend and your mm -hmm. best friend asked you, uh, can I hang with you? He said, well, you, you can hang with me, but you're going to have to give up everything. Oh. <laughs> but did Lazarus give up everything? No, he didn't. No. But, you know, uh, we had another member that was very active in welfare rights, and her name was uh, May Payne, Reverend May Payne. She, in fact, she was, uh, what's the singer name that died? Uh, Aretha? No, 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 the one in New Jersey. Uh, I don't know, but go ahead. They had the Bodyguard movie. Whitney. Yeah, that was her cousin. Her, Whitney's mother was her first cousin. But um, I May said, sweet. May Sweet, 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 sweet inspiration. But anyway, May said one time, she was speaking at a rally we was having, and May said, you know, people just lie in the pulpit all the time. 
because those that say they ready to, uh, they be hollering, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. If Jesus Christ walked in here in this church tonight and say, you say you're ready to go, let's go, you're going to find every reason to stay, to stay here mm -hmm. and you're not ready to go. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I couldn't say it profound like May, but May used to have us almost on the floor. Well, Carla, uh, well, I knew when Marion suggested that there was a list of wealthy pastors, I knew none of them could be in the Detroit area. <laughs> I knew that. I don't know why well, you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But go ahead, Carl. Well, you, you know, uh, you know, T. D. Jakes has uh, it's oh. been around, and um, so is a lot of these other pastors with all the big money. But I wanted, to, and this is from Dr. Lonnie, because I was engineering her show one day, and one of the pastors was on there, and she said, uh, "Well, the congregation they." Give they ten percent. Uh, who does the church tie to? Who does they get eight ten percent? You know that guy. He was the, he, he. You know he can he can the dance no, no better than Sammy Davis around. You know. What's <laughs> <laughs> my question? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the problem. Do what are these? Are these churches tying back to the community? If they were, we would have one of the cleanest cities in. in in, just in America, the city. What a and wonderful concept! Around this city, yeah, uh -huh. I, I never thought uh, of that before. Right. Call the preachers should be tied into the city. What a wonderful concept! They tied for the, the well, you, you think, know, you they tied, tied to the city. Well, yeah, I'm that, saying they I, tied already I, for themselves. I, I, I will remember it to the day I die. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. These pastors have not tied back into our community. Well, see, that's the problem because. You know, we still have, probably have more by now, but these are old figures with 4,017 churches registered in just the city of Detroit. Detroit alone. And if every church, just, just if, if each one, the big ones and the small ones, just gave $100, $100, put it in a pot so we could do some things with it and make that money available to different communities across the city, we could do some cleaning. We could maybe fix these some of these roads up. We could... Yeah. You know, do some renovations uh, on some houses. We can go over there to Home Depot and get some wood and some Fix nails. And what's that stuff? Uh, f uh, what's that stuff called? Flex Seal. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, get some things and hire some young folks to go and just be a repair remodeling brigade and learning in the process. You know, so uh, you know, uh, uh, call it the problem is, is that the kind of organizing strategies we need which means we have to have a plan. We have to discuss it. We have to agree. And then we have to go forward and execute. We just don't seem to be able uh, to get that part to happen. But let us and back up. Some, the one plan that we need, all need to be on is to, to get rid of Public Act 436. That's, once we get rid of Public Act 436 and make sure it never rears its ugly head again in any generation of our offspring's lifetime, then we can move forward. And we I, couldn't, if we go moving forward now, they can take all the gains that we have right now because as long as 436, and I think everybody that feel that they deserve to have freedom to vote for a, a bad choice of a candidate. But at least you can choose. Be joining in this fight. It's a fight I'm ready to lead myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not a bad idea, Carla. Right. You know, we have to uh, 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 draw the line in the sand somewhere. And we, you know, should, we should say that if people are ministers, claim to be ministers in, in uh, the metropolitan area, we're going to send you to a, a, a retreat. But the retreat is that we're going to teach them what they're not teaching. They're not going to come. And uh, that should be a demand that they understand that uh, – you don't put yourself first. I think that ship has sailed already. It's been already sailed. But, uh, uh, that caller, don't mean uh, we can't do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, caller, we got um, a uh, midterm election that's coming up. Mm -hmm. We got a midterm election that's coming up, and the stakes are very high. You know, Mr. Yes, Snyder yes, uh, has his candidate, the one that he wants, running for office. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to be pushed into something very soon unless we try to stake out what are the issues, not these individuals, oh, please, but no. what are the issues that uh, folks need to be talking about, including 
not had the the public school children in Detroit can't drink water. Now that, you know, that that's, be the that's leading really address. something, you know. Uh-huh. So, uh, Carla, uh, give us your finishing thoughts, and uh, we like the way you're thinking. Well, uh, I, I think that you uh, write about the water issue because that's the most important issue for, for everybody should be in the state of Michigan. And the candidate that will champion that is the one that I think that uh, will change the, the mindset of the, I guess, the, the uh, thinking of, of the, these legislators, I think, it, uh, well, give it a good shot. And uh, I think that would be, I have no other choice but to, and from my conversation, is to vote for the, the Democratic ticket uh, of, 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 you know, the lieutenant governor uh, and, the, and uh, Gretchen Whitmer. And, uh, the candidate Gary that supports our issues. They support. I have talked to uh, Garland. He has said every issue that we, you talked about, the water, uh, emergency manager, yes. uh, jobs, school. Man, uh, yeah. He is. A, he says he's a black man, and we're going to see because we, ha- we don't have black men serving. We'll see. Uh, we will. All right, because I'll call him. will be serving uh, us in the future, but this one said that he would, and then Gretchen Whitmer is, said that she would champion those causes too, so we have no other choice, because the other guy, he could have done something, and he didn't. And he didn't. Mm-mm. There it is. So that's all I can go by. Well, uh, Carl, let me just advise you to get down to the Eastern Market when you can, or to the local grocery store, wherever that's you right. shop, and uh, pick out a couple of small watermelons, because it might be time to go back, back to the Call Them Out well, Banquets yes, again. Yes, <laughs> See, yes. We and you know we know, know how to do that. So you really you really know, do I don't mind delivering. Okay. <laughs> You're right. And thank you so much, right. sir. Okay, y'all. Later. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Carla, you've been so patient. Thank you for waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. Hello, beautiful queen. Hello. Hello. Uh, once again, I say it all the time. Uh, the masses are continuously being tricked religiously and politically. Both entities serve the same beast, greed. And uh, I don't know what more can we do because we've been praying and we've been voting for centuries and we're doing the same deal. I mean, it's like you say you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different <laughs> turn out, yeah. mm-hmm. I don't know what else we're going to do because we done tried all that for centuries. And uh, they continue to steal our tax monies and they use our money against us by paying these politicians and these pimps from the pulpits to look the other way instead of serving and helping the people. That's Remember right. when the church used to be our refuge? You used know, to be. That's right. Used to be the pillar of the community. That's right. It, and that's now they're turning into, you know, what, bed, bed the thieves. Uh, well, hold on. Don't give up soon. Cause uh, we may come up with a few. uh, Yeah, we got a few ideas to float over the next few weeks. And then we have a few churches that do stand with us. You know, I know I'm glad that we are part of Central because the whole time we've been there, we've been watching and making sure that Central carries out its duty and what have you. And Sacred, uh, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, Sacred Heart, and uh, Father Thomas. Have all have been out there and marched mm-hmm. with us, just yes, like when has. Ed Rowe was uh, marching with Ed. And Jill now, now mm-hmm. Jill, she she's been out there. Right you should her. come here and and listen to her. She's she's a wonderful uh, speaker, and uh, mm-hmm. she's always ready to hit the road with us. All right, well, all right. Hold on, uh, we got we a few more. ideas, and uh, we gonna f- try <laughs> some different. The days are coming. The days is coming. <laughs> I um, I start my class tomorrow, I got my books, and I'll be in school tomorrow from 12 to 345. Uh-oh, you right. go, girl, go. Get you some water and so you can stay alert yeah. and, and while you're in, in class. All right, now. I got my ginger. Okay. There you go. Thank you for calling. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Bye. Carla, you've been so patient. Thank you for waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. Good evening, ladies. And good evening. Good evening. I appreciate everything you're doing. And I am so appreciative. Yes, ma'am. And I, and I teach my young people. 
No, the little people. Oh, working it's for the what they do. I say that. Um, um, they didn't teach you, sweetheart. Mm-hmm. I said thank you. All right, now, and thank you for calling, call okay? In. Yes, yeah. ma'am, thank you. All right, All right, thank you so much. Carla, you've been so patient. Thank you for waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. Yes, I'm I'm calling about car insurance. I am just oh, so Lord, upset. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Good. Okay, and well, you're happy you are calling in about And, and what did you say? You say you're calling about car insurance. $100 for uh, a year. How much? Forty five hundred. Yeah. A year. It's ridiculous. How do it's you think criminal. people gonna be able to It drive? is criminal. Well, let me say this to you. You notice all these accidents people are having and the folks uh, run away after they after they hit somebody? What does that say? It's because they don't have uh insurance. insurance. And everybody in the state of Michigan, Marion, knows that. Mm -hmm. They don't want to change it. Look, well, you I don't go want downtown. Nobody gonna be legal on the road. What are you gonna do if you drive? If you you don't you can't afford the insurance and you have to go to work? <laughs> or take I'm your children to school. And I, I'm they charging me that much money. It's it's crazy. That's and it's terrible. But let me tell you, did you say you're a senior? Yeah. Okay, huh. call us down to Welfare Rights one day next week. We got okay. some other seniors that are looking for good women to marry. And we'll match you up with two or three folks, and we'll see if we can get you on the matrimony plan oh, Lord, and, 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 and lower your Don't, car insurance uh, premiums. Don't what do you think, Carl? I ain't interested in no, nobody. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> You say no, thank you. See, right. but I'm glad you called. We are happy. But well, wait a minute, in. wait a minute, Carla. Uh, a couple of the people on the list are Canadians. She might be interested Maureen, in a Marine. Marine. Uh, no. Oh no. I was no. just. You're I not, was just you're asking. not matching people. I didn't have my fill. I've been married, and my husband deceased. Yes. I'm quite happy right now. Dad, I know what you mean. Well, I'm <laughs> not. I, I'm not gonna bother you, but I will uh, uh, have you to put that on your mind. <laughs> that if you got a Canadian husband, you would have dual citizenship, and you could travel back and forth across the tunnel or the bridge, whatever you prefer, and then your insurance would be coming. What do they call those dollars over there? The queen, the queen, the, the queen, queen would be on the dollar bill. You see, <laughs> so you'll let me know if you change your mind. I got a couple of Canadians that are looking for some good American uh, wives. All of a sudden okay. now, that's going to become Maureen's other job. <laughs> no. Matchmaking. I don't need that. I ain't mad at you, Carla. Now, listen, uh, uh, but all jokes aside, there is a insurance group. I tried to get Marion on it, but it's called Mimic. You ever heard of that? I called them. Okay, what did Mimic tell you? M Mimic told me uh, it was like forty five hundred too yeah, for Mimic six months. Took I, well, for, well, if you add it up together, it's forty five hundred for for total of a year. Now, now retirees and school teachers and is and it's it not is a hospital? It's not all retirees. They kept no, I know not all of them, but is 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 it um. Hospital workers, too? I or was forgot. it just teachers? Yeah, it's see, I'm teachers. None of those. They told me people in the educational field. Yeah, the educational field. Yeah, I'm not none of that. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, then you better not let that Canadian option go. <laughs> I'll talk to you off, off the air so we can share some particulars. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you, caller. Thank you. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. All right. Bye. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. Oh, good evening. Hey, good evening. I have uh, AARP membership. Uh huh. Yes. And uh, once I got that, once I became a member of AARP, AARP, I checked with them, and they uh, connect me with Hartford Auto Insurance. Hartford Auto AARP, Insurance. Yes. And my rates dropped like fifteen hundred. I'm paying like thirty, three hundred a year. Oh, thirty-three. Oh, uh, thirty-three hundred a year. A year. Okay, so that's about sixteen fifty. Uh, about sixteen fifty every six months. Uh, something like that. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. well maybe the Except young lady. 
Okay. But you have to be a member of ARP. Okay. But you can get a membership for around twelve fifteen dollars a year, or, and it's cheaper if you get like a. I got a four year membership. Okay. For uh, forty dollars. Okay, well, uh, uh, let me do this. If the young lady is uh, still listening that just called in, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, she can follow up with that information unless she's already tried. So uh, contact her, um, uh, AARP, uh, yeah. Ret American Association of, Re of Retired Persons, AARP, and That's check right. with them uh, on car insurance. Now, did you get full coverage or you got no fault? Full coverage. Full yeah, coverage. Full coverage. Okay. Everything. All right. Well, let's try That's that good. and let's yeah. see what yeah. uh, might be able to happen. And I thank you for sharing that. Uh -huh. All right. And thank you so thank very you. much. All right. Yeah. All righty. Caller, you've been so patient. Thank you for waiting and thank you for calling. Ask Welfare Rights. Uh, I was calling to see if I can get the Canadian connection. My quote was 2000 for uh, six months, <laughs> over $2,000 for no fault every so, six months. So are are you are are you interested? Are you saying you're interested in that Canadian option? Say it, you got the Canadian connection. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> you call us at Welfare Rights so we can discuss this quietly, okay? No, we're gonna let you talk to Maureen. <laughs> okay, caller, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you for waiting and thank you for calling. Ask Welfare Rights. Hello, am I on? You are yes. on. Hi, Maureen, and uh, to your guest. My that guest? Gentleman, he is correct, because I am a member of AARP. Okay. I have four children, and I also just got on with their Delta Dental Plan. I got on the 1500 plan uh, for $63 a month. Now, that's so pretty good. AA AARP is a very good plan, so... Tell your audience, to please, please invest in, into it. Thank you, ladies. Have a great night. All right, very good, and I thank you for calling now. So uh, uh, those of you that are uh, retirees, and what we're being told here while we're on the air is that uh, if you go to AARP and uh, become a member, your car insurance rates go down. And the young lady just called, she indicated that, she has dental and some other hospitalization programs. So, uh, callers, uh, write this down, uh, AARP, and, you know, I Hello? said that to somebody once before, and they said to me, um, how do you spell AARP? Oh, and please, I said Mom. very slowly. Look, look. A okay, stop A the RP. <laughs> Carla, thank you so very much for sharing that information. Now you're on the air. What can, what else? Uh, uh, what other information can you give us this evening? She Carl, you still there? You need. Mm, no, she. Uh, I think she hung up. No, she hung up. All right, she just didn't. Well, hang one up thing, phone. Maureen. Let me talk about. Um, Hold on, Mary. Let's take this last call. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. You're, you're calling Welfare Rights, and you are on the air. Good evening. And good evening. All right. Turn your yes. TV down. Yes. All right, you have to listen to us through the telephone. Can you hear? Hello? Yes. Caller, we can't hear you. Uh, All right, go ahead, Mary. You know, uh, for the Poor People's Campaign, we had over some hundred people uh, throughout the state that were arrested, Maureen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and let me say that um, they, you know, all the people with uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, have gotten together, you know, those that could, and, and trying to work out how are we going to deal in the court system. Mm -hmm. And you know that the first thing we received, particularly the folks that might have been arrested in Lansing, the first thing they want you to do is to get the diversion program. Now let us explain to the listening audience what we know about the diversion program. I've been on that once, but I did not have to, well, I didn't want to start that. Um, 
The diversion program consists of you paying about $400. 450 Huh? 450. 450, that's right. And uh, you participate and have uh, some community services that they have to okay. And uh, what was the third thing in that one? I didn't forget. You, but three months without any other oh, that, yeah. arrests. It could, it, it could be three months. It could be six months. That no arrests again with, in, in a demonstration. Uh, for that period of time. And, and at the end of that, it's the decision of the prosecutor and them to make, have, if you have carried out all that, they can tell you that your record will be uh, sponge. In other words, if you had a um, disturbing the peace, that would be brought, which is a misdemeanor, it would be taken off your record. Well, see, the diversion program is a hard thing for the two of us mm -hmm. because the, that program was tested on welfare recipients. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they would, uh, they would end up sending out, uh, uh, the prosecutor would end up going to the welfare office, get a, just get a whole host of people, um, um, what is it, uh, records, yeah. and take them back down and start sending out uh, a warrant has been uh, issued for your arrest because you got too many food stamps two years ago. Mm -hmm. And they, they charge welfare fraud. And they are charged, yeah, welfare fraud. Well, we years ago, we, we found out about it and started going and why that was uh, alive at the time, too. Going down and trying to find out what was going on. The prosecutor almost had a fit when we showed up. You can't go in there. Well, the, yes, I don't know yeah, why, why we not? cannot go in there. It was Maureen, why that, and I. And why we cannot go in there. We have a potential uh, clients in there. And they're talking but, about representing somebody. Uh -huh. You can't come in there with them. Why not? Oh, yes, we, we can. can. Represent. And we so, can advocate. Uh, uh, after about? all, the prosecutor finally gave in and said, go in. And, and we made a, a statement to the people. Look, you do not have to accept the diversion program. You are not the one uh, the, the, uh, that uh, have to prove anything the they have to prove. They it. have to prove that you are guilty, and that's when the security people moved in. Oh yeah, they tried to take us out, but uh, we still. And, and then we had a lot of folks came up to us to speak to us, and each time we found out that they were going to do that, the prosecutor just opened it up for us to be in and said, "Put Marion and Maureen and, uh, and put the welfare rag stuff over there," because we told them, well, "Ask it. if you do." Ask for a jury trial because you have a right to a jury trial. Each and every one of you in here mm -hmm. have a right. We found that there was hundreds of people they were putting yes, in. Yes, hundreds. Then it was a way to instill fear too in people. Absolutely. To not join no organizations or nothing like that. You remember Until who we uh, went to? You hmm. retired now. Oh, yeah. This Paul prosecutor. This, Goodrich, remember? Yeah. Uh, we finally had a prosecutor that we could work with. We had to baptize him. And he, and he thought, he said, I don't know what's going to happen when I leave, Mary. And I said, well, I don't knew. either. Yeah, we knew. But <laughs> they are using the diversion program. Now. Right now on all of us. And we said that this is a test mm -hmm. for this kind of stuff. Now, so if you don't want to take the diversion, you can you ask, ask for, for a jury, jury trial. trial. Sure and that's can. what a lot of folks have now came in and said they want to do. Right. And I am so proud of the people that were arrested and the people that uh, 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 were out there demonstrating, and it was quite a few people. Uh, and, you know, we want to let you know in the future, in the next few weeks, you'll be knowing where are people going to appear in court, and we need you down there. Sounds like a plan. All right, Mary, we have 11 minutes left, okay, and the lines good. are full. So callers, we'll ask you to be brief and loud. You're on the air. Go. Yes, hi. How Fine. Are you there? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. We okay, hear you. I just want to say that young man was right about the Hartford. Please call. I only pay $1,800 a year. The telephone number is 800 Four two three. Four two three. Six seven eight nine. Six seven eight nine. Nothing wrong with that. Four two three. Six seven eight nine. Six seven eight nine. Call him up. Thank you, darling. Thank you. All righty. Thank you so much, caller. You are on the air. We're going quickly. Go. 
uh, everybody must get out and vote for remedy and vote Democrat and make sure Democrat in that governor's spot. We got to keep talking about that because it'll be like real soon and the barbecue is on the way. I oh, just buy. No, I, no, 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 don't believe him, y'all. He's starved to death by the time you get here. <laughs> Thank you, darling. darling. Nice. All right. Caller, you on the air? Yes, the Hartford, you, all you have to be is 55 years old. You don't have to be retired. Oh, 55 and older? Yes. Okay. okay. That's a good piece of news. Thank you for sharing that. All right. All right. Thank you so much. All right, Mary, we didn't finish saying about the General Baker event. Well, uh, in the future, uh, we'll be setting up some more classes. Uh, what classes? You don't know what you Political education classes. The General Baker Institute, Institute has political education classes. Yes, and usually we have them down at the uh, Afro-American Museum. And I want to say On Sundays. To, uh, on Sundays, yeah, after church. Um, right now, uh, you know, we have lost the director of the Afro-American Museum because apparently they brought in another director, Maureen, and we, I'm outraged because the Afro-American Museum have been uh, uh, serving. Yeah. I mean, with Charles help, Charles Farrell's help, who is over-programming and stuff, this young man, along with the staff, have brought in so many programs. The place is packed, packed all, all the time. And it's diverse, Maureen, yeah. and free. You know, all the time. All the time. But certain people now want to change it. And we better be aware of what yeah. kind of changes they are talking about. That's supposed to be our museum. That's right. I'm talking about the community museum. That's right. And we're not going to let them take it away from us. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for waiting. And uh, thank you for calling at, uh, Ask Welfare Rights. We're down to our last four minutes. Okay, I'm talking fast. Go ahead. I'm talking fast. Uh, I want to tell you. AARP has to be 50, not 55. But if you have a family member, you can get on a family plan. As long as they, you have a, a member that's 50, and they can get on a family plan. Okay, uh, that's right. good information. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, now. All right, so, Marion, um, General Baker Institute, and I'm just going to read this little part right here, is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to providing educational courses, programs, and activities for the community and especially for the youth. General Baker Institute will raise funds to support economically disadvantaged Detroit and Highland Park students in their pursuit of higher education. The General Baker Institute will study the revolutionary life and contributions of General Gordon Baker and make widely known the human rights struggles that he waged, the organizations he co-founded uh, and supported and guiding, and guided, and his indefatigable passion for the dialectics of continuing education and praxis. The General Baker Institute will be a center for scholarship and teaching about the history of Detroit and Highland Park and critically exploring their intersection with global transformative movements. The GBI will also examine contemporary issues, social movements, and the development and dissemination of educational materials and programs. Uh, here's a quote here, the victory is in the fight. And Marion, I thought we should just say something about who was on the program. Um, Dr. David Goldberg, associate, uh, um, can't speak, professor of, Af of African American history of, at uh, Wayne State University, was the moderator. And doing a lot of work. You know, Valerie was there, but she wasn't on the panel. No. John Williams, a comrade of General Baker and uh, part of the pre-drum political development. Uh, Ron March L., already original founder of Drum. Uh, Mitch was not there, not feeling well. Lynn Battle, her name is not Lynn Battle, I forgot what yeah, his, um, I forgot now. All right, and Marshall, uh, Music. Marshall Music now for many people that know her. Battle and uh, Marion, and the panel was just absolutely, fun Hicks. oh, that's right, I forgot. And Gregory Hicks, mm -hmm. uh, it was a fantastic uh, panel, and uh, they really discussed the history. A lot of it centered around Dodge, Maine special emphasis on the students, uh, uh, Cass Bell, 
uh, Lynn uh, Wasteland, who was Daryl Mitchell, and some of the other young folks that had to be picked up at 4.35 o'clock in the morning to go and pass out flyers and leaflets because the workers who were involved with drum and writing the Revolutionary Union Movement papers would have been kicked out of jobs. Right. So a whole organizational structure was set up. So it was quite an event, Mary, and I understood from Charles, it was taped. Yes. The thing was video last uh -huh. night, so maybe at some point we can, uh, get it. Uh, we can get it and maybe show part one and part two down here yeah. on a Friday. Did you hear okay. that, Junior? Is that yeah. all right? Well, he, we got to talk to him about it. Yeah. All right, then the other thing that happened. Oh, yeah, the same time. Last night, um, for some of you that know who this is, Paul Bridgewater has been the director of the Area Agency on Aging for 38 years, Marion. Mm -hmm. And he retired, and it was his retirement party was last evening down at... Um, uh, number shed number five. Mm -hmm. I hadn't been to shed number five in a long time. And Marion, they transformed the whole facility, the whole building, into a, a disco, playing um, oldies but goodies, all kinds of things. Uh, I'll never hear the bells, oh, the that's intruders, wonderful. I, I, all of that. The food was to die for. And free drinks. Don't you call me late at night no more and tell me what kind of food you I <laughs> call you early in the daytime, but you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with Bridgewater at the helm, Detroit uh, Area Agency on Aging has grown from 12 employees when he first pulled I it together mm -hmm. to 150. That's right. And from an annual operating budget where they started of $8.4 million to today, Marion, $72 million a year. Uh, uh, area Agency on Aging is one of 16 Area Agency on Agings in Michigan and one of 670 across the nation. And here's a quote from, uh, just Paul is just a wonderful young man. Yeah, yeah, he was. Our agency services the largest minority population of older adults in the state, said Bridgewater, who estimated that uh, trip, the DAAA serves approximately 150,000 seniors annually. My aunt is part of that, honey, uh, 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 and, and uh, lots of folks in the building where she is, be, uh, and the way they're involved, Marion, is that they bring them Meals on wheels. Meals on wheels. Yeah, on every that. day. You know, anytime yeah. we had a problem in Always. the community, all we had to do was call Paul. Call him. I say, I'm coming over there. He say, Oh no, mm. you ain't got to come over there unless. And, yeah, and he was always there for welfare rights. All and the I time. Through these I really years. appreciate yes. that, and and congratulations to him to be able to uh, retire, and he he was always um, a person that it's I know welfare guy, rights. You know? I could uh, depend on. Absolutely. All right, Marion, you have 30 seconds to say good night. Good night. I'm going home and go to bed. Oh, was that it? Oh, that you only it. took three seconds. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, say you folks that drive cars, and we've mentioned this several times, don't go to gas stations in the dark. Please. Not trying to suggest that. You, you, you know, things may be, you know, uh, safe in the daytime. But it doesn't make sense to keep going to the gas station at 1.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning because it appears as if the new segment, Marion, of criminals, they like third shift. They ain't out there in the morning. And in the afternoon, I think they're just ironing their clothes and getting their hair combed. Mm -hmm. But that third shift, that midnight shift, it appears as if the uh, ne'er-do-wells are really preying on each other. Uh, uh, and we're talking about the 26 and 27-year-olds shooting at each other. You know, that's how we got and uh, saved a lot of youth during the period of time when we had the League of Revolutionary Black Workers. We'll have to do they were involved. We got them. Educated them in positive and things, they, yeah. and they emerged as some of the great leaders out here, even today. Uh -huh. All so right, this was one. I was one of them. I was, <laughs> you know. 
So uh, I also want to say a uh, happy birthday to Sharon Taylor. Oh, Sharon's uh, uh, birthday uh, Happy is birthday today. to you. I haven't gotten any instructions on what are we doing over the weekend, but uh, uh, let me know, and I'll call you by the time I get home. So happy birthday. That's happy my, birthday, uh, Sharon. my baby sister. Uh -huh. So uh, the other thing is, you know, maybe this weekend, I know that movie is called Death Takes a Holiday. And maybe this weekend, if we just pass the message around to everybody we talk to, uh, let's don't say or do anything to hurt anybody between now and Sunday night. Let's just try to give it a break. So pass the message along. Let's see if we can be nice to each other for at least two and one a half last, days. One last thing, Maureen. Go. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to do what we used to do as far as these young women being out late at night. They think nothing is going to happen to them. You know, you... Uh, you know, people are turning and, and uh, still snatching them. We used to be out at night. And Remember we, those yeah, days? Yeah, but we were Things together. Things have changed. We, had, we, woke, we woke, were a crew. Crew together. Yeah. We're going to have to sit down and teach our young women. I know they think when they get 18 that they know everything. But at the same time. You go time, to a club. You don't leave one of your mm -mm, crew there. You don't leave them and, there. And, and I like this guy. And Hell I think no. I'm going to stay here. No, no, no. We're getting in the car together. We can't remember, remember getting in the car together. If they together. want your phone number, say no. I'll take your phone number. And you call them. All right. Lord willing, the creek don't rise. Next Friday, we will be here. And uh, again, for the next two and a half days, let's don't say or do anything to hurt each other.